Hi, I'm Peter Boyles. Welcome one more time to The Shoot. And of course, this was put together a YouTube television show here at 710 KUS Studios. Mark Crowley, of course, behind the cameras and Brian Taylor and Kelly Michaels. And we've done a lot of great shows, but this is one that I really wanted to do for the longest time. Uh, and it's about motorcycling, but it's a lot more than just riding motorcycles. It's about the culture and what works. The man to my left uh, is name's Todd Hills. And as I said, people that start to tell stories about Todd Hills and I, I always go, <laughs> probably, you know, I said, be ever asked Todd if that's a true story. He now is a proprietor for the Wide Open Saloon, perhaps the front range is most successful. And it's, it's a biker bar, but it's not. First of all, welcome. Thanks for doing hey, this. Hey, Pete, thanks for yeah, having me on. No, please. And, and you're right. It's almost 20 years, and this is the first time we've ever sat down and done We never did radio like together. We never no, did television nothing. together. So I'm honored that you uh, ah, had me on today. And Please. Yeah. Uh, what was your question? I forgot already. Well, if, we took, if we took, I mean, I remember some of the early places we had Top Gun Motorsports, which right. is, I think we, and we can talk about it for a second, but we showed people how to do promotions with motorcycle shows and bars. I think we, we took it to another level. Yeah, uh, well, when you think of motorcycles and you think of bars, you think that they don't mix, but yeah. it's really a, the motorcycle culture and, you know, for instance, Wide Open Saloon, Top Gun Motorsports mm -hmm. back in those days, it was really just a, a community gathering place yeah. of a bunch of motorcycle enthusiasts yeah. that could gather around their bikes and show up once a week and talk about what the, what they've done to their bikes, what they're going to do to their bikes, where they're going riding, where they went riding last week. And then it's kind of evolved from there into, uh, you know, wide open saloon today mm -hmm. and, you know, many other venues around around the Rocky Mountain region where we, people gather. We, we both are Sturgis aficionados. Yeah. And to see Sturgis is the greatest example of the culture not being seen. And uh, there was Burning Man this year, and Burning Man got all kinds of national attention because of it rained. It rained in Sturgis. And guys are sinking motorcycles up to their hubs. Right. Eh, it wasn't on CNN. <laughs> it wasn't on the night. You know, the news. only time we got yeah. uh, any, any yeah. national recognition with Sturgis is during the COVID year, when that culture decided that, you know That's what, right. we're going to gather. I'd forgotten and they that. did, almost a million of those bikers and, and those We went to the, we were there the COVID year. Yeah. They gathered. They got some national attention from that, for That's sure. That's right. Yeah. I'd forgotten. Yeah. This is Brandon Mize. Now, this is one of those flukes. I have a great friend who has motorcycles that are just over the moon. They're called fat baggers. And you have to look up fat baggers. They're exotic choppers and... The, I think the base price is about, what, about $75,000? Yeah, I think that's probably about the minimum. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so. That's, that starts the conversation. That, that's so, <laughs> anyhow, so we go out for a ride, and his fat bagger is throwing smoke and doing what motorcycles do. So he tells me, I found this young man. He said, I found this chopper shop, and I love the name Devil's Head Chopper Shop. And he's in Castle Rock, and he said, well, you follow me down there and I'm gonna drop the bike off and, uh, and I said of course I will I walk in on this guy <laughs> he's like he's a throwback Todd he's like I was trying to describe him to somebody you don't exist in 2023 you really belong at about 1968 <laughs> in, in California you know with uh, you know, sitting out there with you know with the guys that are hanging out with Steve McQueen I mean, that's where you really do belong. But um, you have this incredible, I mean, knockout chopper shop. What else do you call it? Well, uh, I just call it fun. That's kind of what it's based on. Yeah. So that's uh, one of my favorite things to tell people is it's, uh, it shouldn't be stressful to do fun things to your motorcycle. It might be stressful waiting for yeah. it, but it shouldn't be... Uh, shouldn't be hard. Just drop it off, tell me what you want, and we'll handle it. Well, when we pulled up on it, and there used to be places like this, and I don't know if the corporate world has taken them over, 
Uh, Todd, you have a, honestly, you're closer to it than I am. But this place is. Um, well, it's how motorcycle shops and, used to be. Well, that, that's yeah. why I said where you yeah. belong. Well, sort yeah. of. We also have a lot of uh, serious technology in there. Oh. So, but. I mean, you told me, I didn't realize until we were doing the show, that your dad was very much involved in computer programming. Indeed. So uh, that's kind of where I picked a lot of that up and uh, did some school for computer science and all of that. And I worked uh, in the corporate world for a while. I hated that. I, uh, <laughs> we all did. We all did. <laughs> did about six years yeah. managing project controls yeah. for cell phone tower construction. And uh, I would go, I kind of went full Peter on that. I rode my motorcycle to work every day. I showed yeah. up looking like this. And, yeah. and uh, then I would leave early and go home and work on motorcycles and build choppers yeah. in my garage. Same. And that took off to the point where I had to open a shop. And uh, that was super fun and super scary. With one single bay, nothing in it, I still remember sweeping up the mess in there, mm -hmm. thinking, how am I going to make this work? So now it's been 10 years or so, and we've expanded four times. And yeah. We've got millions of dollars of CNC equipment. And For the people that don't know, he has, he's building parts. Yeah. Todd? He's building some incredible parts. His it, wheels are amazing. Uh, uh, you know, you used to have to go out and you have to you used to have to powder coat every one of your yes. bolts on your bike, and yes. he's making these magnetic bolt covers that are color. Got them on my bike. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's super cool what he's doing there. And so I meet this young guy and your your girlfriend and your staff. And the, uh, by the way, after I left you last week, I rode up to rode up to uh, to Todd's, and a couple guys get off, and the guy has pink covers. And he said, hey, man, I met you. And he comes over and shakes my hand. He said, I met you with, you know, down there. And I thought, y you know, you deserve some attention. And you've done this great work. But I still, and I was thinking about how do I put this together last night. If you were in Oakland in 1968, <laughs> you know, and, and taking front ends off of Sportsters and building Springers and, you know, elongated front ends or building... Easy Rider motorcycles. You could have easily been that guy. And that's a tribute. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah, still tribute. get to do some of that stuff. Uh, and I really enjoy doing that. And eventually, I hope my business grows to the point where I can go back to just doing that. And everybody handles all the parts manufacturing for me. Well, he so. can tell you what starts out when you, know, it, it's, you hope to do this. Right. I, I said to Todd before... Before we started doing this shoot, and I, I I love Todd Hills. We've had some serious adventures together. I I said, did you really imagine yourself? I mean, the the wide open is incredibly successful, and there's designs on expansion. Did you ever see yourself being that guy? You know, I probably didn't. You yeah. know, I, I really thought, uh, you know, I had I had a large company for years and expanded across four states, and I sold the majority of that company back, you know, in 2007, 2008 when we actually yeah. met, and I kind of felt like I was just going to take my take my uh, retirement money, and my you know my wife had a retirement party mm -hmm. for me, and in, in the whole nine yards, and <coughs> like, I'm not really ready to retire, but I kind of thought the plan was just kind of sit back, chill. And um, go play some golf, maybe ride the motorcycles nice around a little sure, bit. And, of you know, I went on a motorcycle trip. It's amazing what, what can happen when you just get a few buddies together and get out on a Where motor did you motorcycle go? trip. We actually rode to uh, one of my longtime employees was getting married and he was out of the Salt Lake operation. We'd actually already sold the company, but you know, I've, I've known this kid since he was 10 years old mm -hmm. and he was getting married. So I said, you know what? I gathered a few of my buddies and I said, let's go jump on our bikes and we're going to ride to Salt Lake to Hector's wedding. So that's what we did. We rode to Salt Lake City. And I, you remember Kevin. That oh, of course. Me. Real of quick, course. funny yeah. story about yeah. Kevin. He he was a motorcycle guy, but he yeah. had crotch rockets. And yeah. at that time, he didn't have a bike. And he said, Todd, I really want to go with you. And I said, really, I'd love you to go. I said, but the only bike I have, you know, now I have a lot of bikes. Yeah. But back then I had... One bike, and my wife had one bike, and her bike was the uh, 
we called it Sporty Spice. It was I remember a pink it. Sportster, I if you remember it. the of bike. Of course, yeah. And um, I said, that's the only thing I got for you to ride. I said, but it hasn't been ridden in about a year. You better go pick it up and make sure it's ready to go. Get the oil changed, make sure it's ready to run. So he does, picks it up, meets me at my house at 7 a.m. My other buddy meets me at my house at 7 a.m. Off we go on this trip to kind of clear my head and figure out oh, what's yeah. going what's gonna to happen next in my life. We no, lo- no more get up two miles up the highway at I 70 and before we got on the highway, I looked over at Kevin and I tapped my gas tank. Well, you know what that means. Gas. You know, let's feel. make sure we all have gas. And he's like, no problem. <laughs> Got gas. <laughs> I've had that too. <laughs> so, done to you. Yes, done, done to, to me. Done to you. If you can imagine <laughs> Brandon, who's a yeah. big, big, yeah. big boy. Yeah. Kevin was just as big. Yes. And he's on a 883 pink flame job sports Sportster. With a white t-shirt, we head up the highway, I-70. All of a sudden, he runs out of gas. He did everything to the motorcycle but put gas in it. (laughs) (laughs) That's how our trip starts. Anyway. By the way, I know a guy on a Sturgis run. We're coming down a hill and his bike goes, I forgot about that. in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, there's a gas station. Yeah. And we rolled up to the pump and you filled up. I mean, yeah. he, we're at the crest I of the hill. I ran out at the top of the hill. And we cooked Wyoming. You know, like nobody went under 110 across Wyoming. Yeah, it, was, it was three and, digits. familiar with that. And, I, that. and there's a bunch of great Todd Peter stories, but I could see his bike. And I'm going, uh-oh. And we crested the hill. I don't even know what kind of gas station it was. You literally rolled dry. I think we rolled into Torrington, Wyoming or something. That might have been it. Yeah. Rolled yeah. in dry. I mean, he yeah, was dry. Dry. Yeah. Full tank of gas. We're on the road again. On the road, on the road again. again. Yeah. So you're on the road. So we're on the road. We get to Salt Lake. We go to the wedding. <coughs> and uh, we bumped into uh, a dealership that had a bike night. And... It was this amazing gathering, and it was a, it was a big dog chopper shop. Oh man, is what it was, and they had a bike night on Wednesday nights, and you know they had great food, they had some beer, and, but it, mm. they had a live band, and it just was a it was a community gathering of motorcycle enthusiasts mm. that gathered every Wednesday, and and just really mm. showed off their bikes, yeah. and then talked about you know all their experiences and where they're going this weekend and you know are you are you going to Sturgis and all Mm -hmm. that so a couple things happened there that was the birth of Top Gun Motorsports and the in in later in life the original wide open saloon and that was the birth of myself transfer transfer transforming into a real motorcycle enthusiast wanting to do it that wanted yeah. to be involved yeah. in the business yeah. so i rode home i bought a bike there by the way i bought a bike yeah. and uh it was a chopper yeah. and he says do you want me to ship it and i said no i don't no. want you to ship it i'm gonna ride this yeah. motorcycle yeah. <laughs> you should have seen kevin jones's face it lit up like you can't believe it because he figured if i bought that motorcycle then he could ride my street glide home <laughs> <laughs> and we'd leave sporty spice in utah <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what happened. <laughs> we got home, uh, went to my building there at 58th yeah. and I-25, and I walked in my CFO's office, who was just kind of winding down yeah. the old company, and I said, guess what we're going to do? And this was a, a a really nice guy. He was my CFO. He was a great guy. You remember Jim, sure, right? of course. About as far from a motorcycle enthusiast guy as wore you a tie. could be. Yes. This guy wore a tie. In Teva. Yeah. In, in Teva shoes yeah, right. from Boulder. I right. said, we are going to transform this no. corporate office at 58th and I-25 into one of the greatest motorcycle dealerships this town has ever seen. And it happened. And it happened. It happened. And it happened. I, I and mean, that's where life changed for me. And I don't know how I met Todd. I was doing mornings on KHOW. And uh, I was going through a rough time in my life. And they said, well, this... And I went up and I said we could do this and, and he said yes we can <laughs> we did it and um, I, t- I tell you a quick Todd story and I have a picture to prove it Todd and I are going to Sturgis 
And, and we'll all, most of these stories begin with Todd and I are, and then it, there's a fill in the blank after that. Yeah. So we're going to go to Sturgis. So we had a get together at, we're going to leave from Top Gun. And, and Brennan, I think I told you the story when we, second time we were together. So there's a group of about eight people. Yeah. And I think everybody knows everybody. And I'm about a quarter inch off the floor then. And we go to Sturgis. And yeah, we're riding up. It was a meet up to ride up with Todd and Pete. Yeah, if you want to go with Todd and Peter, yeah. uh, we're going to meet up and go. And so we have coffee, we get on the bikes, and we, and we go to Sturgis. This guy's with us, and he's riding with us. Uh, I, and, he, and we're staying in uh, Deadwood because I knew, long story, a long way around the barn, I, I knew the mayor of Deadwood, who uh, made sure we always had rooms in the Deadwood, and, and there's a casino in Deadwood. So this guy, and everybody's sleeping on the floors, I mean, it's, it's Sturgis. This guy, Brandon, I'm telling you, snored. It's the worst snorer, and I've been around some serious snorers. This guy was killer. I mean, the windows would rattle. It's the second night, I go, that's enough. So I pick up the phone. I go, Todd, you got to get your buddy out of here. <laughs> pick it up. The story's yours. <laughs> the guy shows up at the dealership. We ride up together. Pete thinks I know him. Pete thinks he's my buddy. I think he's Pete's buddy. <laughs> Turns out neither one of us didn't even didn't didn't know the guy. We didn't even know the guy at all. So on the way up, we get about, I don't know, typical 20 miles out of Sturgis. Yeah. It starts pouring rain. Yes. We pull over for a minute, and this guy's like, and he's got his tent, his sleeping bag, oh, everything on everything. the back of his bike. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know, boy, I'm going to have to camp in the rain and all that. And Pete being the nice guy he is, he's hey. like, hey, I'm going to take care of Todd's buddy. I'm going to invite yeah. him to stay in my hotel room. And that's what happens. We, there's a woman on that trip that we can't even talk about. Right. And so if I call him up and go, boss, you know, this guy, he said, that's not my guy. I don't know who he is. So, I thought he was your guy. So I, I and he was a big guy. Yeah. I said, look. You got to find a home, you know. <laughs> and to his credit, so six months we go up to Christmas time. For Christmas, Todd gives me a framed picture <laughs> of all of us. I still have. I got it on my yeah. bookshelf with that fella. With in the, the guy in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> For all the money in the world, a, a new car and what's behind the curtain. I could not tell you that guy's name. His name's Art. What was it? His name is Art. He showed up at the wide open saloon one day. And he goes, do you remember me? I do go, I? I go, Absolutely, I remember Art. you. Yep. Art lived with, Art lived with me for, yep. for two days. Yep. I thought he was Todd's guy. You know, I thought, yeah, he was the invisible man. Yeah. But th that's motorcycle stories that are always so good. Yeah. I mean, they, this culture that, that we talk about, it develops and tells these stories. And it really does. And now there's a, there's a major film coming out. There was a book that came out that got a lot of attention called The Motorcyclists. And now the film is coming from behind it. Sons of Anarchy, I mean, all these different things. What's happened to Harley Davidson, what's happened to Indian. I mean, these things have enormous significance in what's going on in the culture. Brennan, what do you see coming? Because you're gonna be doing this a long, long time after, certainly after me. Well, uh... That's tough. It's tough to foresee that future. Um, what do you want to do? For my company? Yeah. Uh, I would like to keep growing in our parts manufacturing. Uh, that I think is... Kid can make some wheels. Yeah, he can. <laughs> that I think is our future because uh, we are about at the capacity for how many motorcycles we really want <laughs> to be able to do. Don't kid yourself. You were at that capacity at six, eight months, maybe two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but now it's now it's to the point where we really need to be a little bit pickier on which bikes we work on. And you need to expand. No, done that, <laughs> done that four times. <laughs> we'll probably do it yeah. several more times, but it's uh, right. it's tough finding good mechanics. So, and that's. In our business, they have to be good. We're putting people on these things. So it's important that we have good mechanics. And I would much rather do less motorcycles than have bad 
bikes go out. So well, that was always the rap that you know who who did fix your motorcycle, and um, for those of you who remember the Tuttles that had um, the Chopper Show on television, that's what ended that. Oh um, yeah, that is, was. Uh, well, you know the story. Go ahead. I've uh, well, I've met those guys, and they're. Uh, I met they, them. I met the dad. I met the dad. I met the dad too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was. Uh, I, I, I've never met the other two. Yeah. So that was motorcycles you couldn't ride. Oh. You couldn't enjoy them. But no so, one. But no, they turned into movie stars too, and they got too big. So I've, I've gotten the advice from multiple people who are very famous that a lot of people have heard of that don't let yourself get too big and. I've already gotten bigger than they said I should ever do. But. Well, I, I met Paul Paul Senior in Sturgis, and um, he's in recovery. Of course, and that's part of the story of the chopper shop. But mm -hmm. I, and I talked to him. I said, um, and, and the feud with the kid. And I said, is that you know, is, is that a shoot or is that a work? You know, is that like pro wrestling? Are you making this up? And he said, no. He said, it's real. He, he and the kid. But then they started building bikes that. Well, I remember the go fast bike that they built that um, showed up at the dealership one day yeah. to get some, you know, every time they sent somebody out on that bike, somebody fell over or something broke. Um, and then they would bring it to Top Gun Motorsports. And I'm like, I, I don't know what we're going to do with this. No. Thing. You know, yeah, where do you even start on that? <laughs> no, but I think that's your dilemma too. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, like that uh, Fat Bagger Industries yeah. bike, it's like. I hope nothing serious breaks on this because this is going to be tough to even figure out what they did. But that's the thing about buying exotics. Yeah, it's going to have trouble. It's going to have trouble. And wow. uh, we're pretty good at figuring that stuff out. <laughs> You're real good at it. So, so tell me this weekend. This is one of the reasons the guys are here. This is a one of a kind. Um, so you're at, yes. Uh, yeah. It. it uh, so I was at a rally in uh, in Arizona. And, you know, when you go to our rallies, they always have a bunch of vendors all over the place. And, and uh, But this one particular vendor really caught my eye because I think probably 80% of the crowd was gathered around his yeah. oh, sure. his, uh, his trailer. And it was it, it, basically what it is, it's dyno drags. So basically we're bringing the, we're bringing the drag strip to Wide Open Saloon this week in a safe, environment he has a drag tr he has a big long trailer he's got two dinos in it he's got the uh, monitors on the side that the, the crowd can see you know their times how fast they're going what their rpms are he's got the christmas tree lights so we're really excited about it and, and brandon and i are putting this show on this weekend along with motor renters and aces motorsports and <laughs> there's you know, a lot we got a bunch yeah. of vendors coming it's kind of an end of the summer blowout oh, i'll be there you know and he Part of these bikes, or a big part of these bikes, is you know making sure that your engine's right and it's performing right, and, and this is a perfect time of the year to really figure out if your bike is what you think it is, and if it isn't, <laughs> but, 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 we'll what, fix. They'll fix it. Too. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, but it, it's almost like when you think of sport or you think of anything. Uh, I know your souls and horses, and there's always somebody, and they talk about you know how did rodeo begin. Well, there's, they have all these different theories, but it was one, how fast is your horse? Mine's, right, right. Or the other one that I've heard that I really love is somebody said, I can ride that bull. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and somebody said, well, back it up against the fence. I'll get on it and let's see if we right. can make some money. But that kind of thing. And so with motorcycles, it's always, you know, and to steal from Top Gun, it always was. Who was going to be? And even now, you know, mo you go to the drags, and I know you guys have done it. You go out to Bandemir. When the Nationals come, the greatest looking women in the world are riding. I mean, they're going through the traps at a buck 80. I mean, right. holy smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Well, the um, American culture's about always been about horsepower. Thank you. Horsepower. I, I agree. Indeed. That's what it is. And, 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 and that's the big fight. I wrote a column about it. It's the fight with the Greens. The Greens don't like drag racing. The Greens don't like NASCAR. The Greens don't like you guys. The Greens don't like us. They don't like, you know, I make a running gag about being proud of my carbon footprint, you know, <laughs> right. but, but they, they, they don't like your truck. No. Belching hydrocarbons no. into the atmosphere is 
frowned upon, but it's also really, really fun. And but yeah. the time, but the time will come. Yeah, hopefully I, uh, not. But it's something to think about. Well, we may be more of a boutique thing in 50 years, but it's never going to go away. But when no. you put guys together, and this, this to wrap the show, but on Saturday at Todd, to give the location again. Wide Open Saloon, Sedalia, Colorado. Can't miss it. Can't <laughs> miss it. So you roll two bikes up next to each other. Yep. Yeah, this should be fun, and everybody has a good chance because I'm not going to be running any of my bikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm not uh, going to run any of mine. Yeah, so. definitely no stranger to uh, drag racing, that's for sure. Yeah. Isn't that the best? <laughs> yeah. I, final, it and, looks and, boring if you've never done it, no. but it is so it's much an fun. adrenaline rush. John sure. Vandermeer sat where you are on two occasions since we began this series. And the final uh, time the, the, the Nationals came, and I have a picture, he clamped the headsets on me, and took me out on the line for the fuel, top fuel, they, they'll knock you over. And I watched uh, uh, Brittany Force break the track record at Bandemir. And uh, you, you, you feel them, you yeah. feel those engines. and. Uh, you know, and, and I wrote in the column, last month's column, and I wrote, called, I titled it, A Piece of America's Gone, because they're shutting that down. I have uh, many fond memories of Bandemir. It's, my, good, it's yeah. a good man. My old man had a Viper when I was oh. uh, 10 to 12, somewhere around yeah. that range. And uh, I distinctly remember going out to the Mopar Nationals, because the Viper Club gets invited. <laughs> there you go. There you are. And they had the boxes up over the top, but yeah. being a kid, they gave me your... Uh, earplugs oh, man. and let me run around before they had the chain link fence and and all of that and uh and that was just a blast it was so much fun and, I'm and there it is definitely yeah. disappointed that that and at I least that location is ending i love what you said it's always been about horsepower it's always mm -hmm. been about horsepower that's what america's always been about <laughs> these are thank you for allowing me to do this show todd hills and i deserve to do much more than that but they have to be when we're both dead because <laughs> <laughs> statute of limitations runs out. This young man, keep an eye on him. Uh, give the address for, for Devil's Head. I think it's up on the screen, but if you would. Uh, we're at 1050 Topeka Way in Castle Rock. And uh, it's really easy to find us on the web with uh, devilsheadchoppers.com and also Facebook and Instagram. You always see my mug up there uh, putting up videos of all kinds of stuff that we're doing. Cool. It's a lot of fun. This has been The Shoot on 710 KNUS.